one of these ladies was a crew member on the first attempt to fly a balloon across the Atlantic Ocean. What is your name, please? My name is Rosemary Mudie. What is your name, please? My name is Rosemary Mudie. What is your name, please? My name is Rosemary Mudie. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Rosemary Mudy, and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, who, according to the current issue of Pageant Magazine, is TV super MC Bud Collier. <laughs> Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> Ralph, I think it's only meet and right that the moment we correct a misapprehension uh, that occurred during the past week when you rejoined us, thank heaven, on our panel. Uh, we got letters, and I understand you did, too, when I checked with you, from all over the country saying what happened. Is Ralph's uh, play closed on Broadway, uh, Sunrise at Campobello, or has he left the show? Well, there's no such thing. I just have to straighten out with everybody that we got a, a man who's a real fast guy with a taxi here, and he beats it out of here and is gone before you can turn around and say, good night, Ralph. But he makes it. He is still very much starring in Sunrise at Campobello at the Court Theater. And if you haven't seen it, you missed one of the great performances of our time. Just thought I'd put the record straight. We're glad to share you with us. Thank you very much, Bud. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, these three ladies, as you heard, all claim to be Mrs. Rosemary Mudie. Only one, of course, is the real Mrs. Rosemary Mudie. The other two have assumed that identity. Panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Mrs. Rosemary Mudy, work in public relations in London for a British advertising agency. In 1956, I gave my husband a book on ballooning for a Christmas present. We became enthusiastic and decided to try to fly a balloon across the Atlantic Ocean. I signed on the crew as cook and photographer. On December the 12th, four of us took off from the Canary Islands. After nearly four days in the air, the balloon was forced down, and we sailed the remaining 1,500 miles using the gondola as a boat. We arrived at the Barbados Islands January 5th. We are the first people to ever attempt a crossing of the Atlantic Ocean in a free balloon. Signed, Rosemary Mudy. Now, panel, you heard these three ladies all claim to be Mrs. Rosemary Mudie, who attempted to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a free balloon. Uh, only the real Ms. Mudie, of course, is required to answer your questions truthfully. Let's begin tonight's questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, it, uh, it says here in the affidavit that you signed on as a, uh, as a cook. What did you cook? Well, there was nothing to cook because everything we took with us was just eaten as it was. We had no facilities for cooking at all. It's fun to sign on for something you don't have to do any work with. Uh, number two, uh, how much helium did the balloon carry? The balloon didn't carry helium. It carried hy uh, hydrogen. Uh, number three, where, did the, where was the balloon forced down? Um, 1,200 miles after we started. What was the location? Um, in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, number two, uh, it, it, it says here you're talking, uh, what is the difference between a, a free balloon and one you paid for? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the one you paid for, but I know that a free balloon is one that is uh, just sliding with the wind. It isn't anchored to anything. Oh. Not a captive balloon. Why do you steer it? Well, actually, you don't. You have to go with the wind, with the free wind. Oh, I see. Ralph Bellamy. Uh, number two, uh, who were the other members of the crew and how are they related, if there were any of them? Well, one was my husband, Colin, and the other were father and son, uh, Bushy and Tim Eilward. Uh -huh. um, what was your original destination? Still number two, number two, yes. 
Barbados, or somewhere in the British West Indies. Uh, number one, uh, why were you reluctant to make a statement when you were brought ashore at Barbados? Because um, we had already sold the story rights to a London newspaper. Win, lose, or draw. Kitty? <laughs> number one, it says here that this whole thing started with a book on ballooning. What was the name of the book? Uh, Aerostatics and Balloons. Number two, what was the name of the book that started you off? History of Ballooning. I was afraid of that. So, number three, what started you off? A book called Balloons. <laughs> Balloons? <laughs> number one, where are the Barbados Islands? They're in the Windward Islands, part of the Windward Islands. And number two, where are the Windward Islands? In the Lower Antilles. <laughs> <laughs> and where are the Lower Antilles, number three? West Indies, British West Indies. <laughs> number one, where is Dominica? I don't know. We didn't Do you know, know where Dominica is, number two? No, with things like that I usually call colonies. Hi, Gart. Uh, number one, who are the uh, Picard brothers? But they um, were balloon experts, father and son, I believe. Number two, uh, uh, do you know who the Picard brothers were? Yes, they were Belgians. Uh, number three? I think they were um, balloonists and, and people who went deep down in the sea. Uh huh. Number one, uh, uh, can you tell me what a man named Hugh Eckner became famous for? Um, no, I don't know the name. Number three? No, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Uh, number three? I don't know, no. Uh, a number uh, two, for what London... Sorry, that's about it, I'm afraid. Hi, it's time to vote. So without consultation, will you kindly mark your ballots, panel, and in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. Team of challengers, of course, will, as usual, get $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, all set? Polly, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Number one and number two knew an awful lot of answers, but nobody asked number three, so... <laughs> I figured maybe because she was quiet, she was the real one. All right. Ralph, your vote. Number two. Uh, mainly because she was... Uh... Uh, quicker and more ready with the answers and a kind of a wild and adventurous look in her eye. <laughs> <laughs> and who, in your opinion, is the real one, Kitty? I voted for number one. Her book on ballooning sounded more complicated than the other two. <laughs> <laughs> and High Gardner, please. Well, I voted for number three. She mentioned the Picard brothers as having not only gone in the air in balloons, but also underneath the sea, which they did. And furthermore, when she first walked out, I thought that uh, more than any of the other girls, she seemed to be happy to have her feet on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll bet they were, too, when they were finally picked up. All right, let's find out now after the votes have been made, and I trust that you're voting along at home, how right or wrong we are. And maybe you, too, as we discover which one of these three ladies really was one of the first group to ever attempt to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a balloon. So will the real Rosemary Muti please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> the balloon is quiet and she was quiet and there you are. <laughs> My daughter says it's always the quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, it was that time. All right. Now, let's see. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Rosemary Anderson and I live in New York and I'm a travel advisor. Travel advisor. Yeah. Thank you. Number two, what about you? My name is Nora May. I'm a fashion model with Russell Stewart, and I live in New York, too. Thank you. <laughs> well, we do a little checking up here. We find that balloon or no balloon, there were exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. And ladies, on your way out, you will find a carton of Marlboros for each of you, which I know you'll enjoy. Good night, good luck, and happy ballooning. <laughs> Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What are your names, please? My name is Shirley McClarity, and this is my husband, Roy. What are your names, please? My name is Roy McClarity, and this is my wife, Shirley. <laughs> what are your names, please? My name is Shirley McClarity. My name is Roy McClarity. <laughs> All right, panel, follow along with this next affidavit. We, Shirley and Roy McClarity, are both professional wrestlers. We met while we were wrestling on the same card. Three months later, we were married in the same ring just before the main event. 
We still wrestle individually, but we also wrestle together in tag team matches. We are the proud parents of four children. Signed, Shirley and Roy McClarity. All right, panel, you heard these three couples this time, all claim to be Shirley and Roy McClarity, husband and wife wrestling team. We'll begin this round of questioning with Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Well, uh, <laughs> I used to I follow the wrestling uh, when I could, when I had available evenings. I don't know too much about the women, though, so my questions will have to be directed to the men, I guess. Uh, Mr. Number One, uh, who is the announcer at the um, Hollywood American Legion Stadium? I can't think of his name right now. Number two, do you know who he is? I don't know. Number three, do you know? I don't know either. Number one, Mr. Number one, do you know the name of the announcer at the Olympic Stadium in Los Angeles? No, I don't know. Do you number two? No. Nope. Do you number three? No. Nope. <laughs> Fine start. Number one, do you know who is the uh, promoter in Washington, D.C.? No, I can't think of his name right Do you, now. number two? Well, there's one, There's about three promoters down there. Tom well, Manaville, Cliff Ar, Arbuckle. I, I forget the third one's name. Kitty Carlisle. Uh, Mrs. McClarity, number one. Oh, you never watch the men, only the women. <laughs> uh, what ring did you get married in? In Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Mrs. McClarity, number two. It says here that you um, got married just before the main event uh, in the ring. Did you also wrestle that night? No. <laughs> Not in the ring. <laughs> well, what if I said now? Oh! Uh, we're, we're a little late, folks, so good night. <laughs> Grand being with you. Uh, Kitty, how, how do you pronounce the word A-S? No, never mind. <laughs> number three, what is your, Mrs. McClarity, number three, what is your favorite hold? The drop kick. The what? A drop kick. Drop kick? Yes, ma'am. Oh. You have a I lovely thought, home yeah. uh, Number one, uh, what would uh, a toe hold be? You hold the toe. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gardner, please. Uh, Mrs. Number One, it says that you were married in the ring. Who married you, the referee? Oh, no, Justice of the Peace. Uh, in wrestling, it should be the Justice of the Pieces. <laughs> uh, Mr. Number One, uh, who invented the whole known as the Half Nelson? Uh, it was Nelson himself that invented it. First name? I can't think of it just now. It was around 18-something, 1890 or something. Mr. Uh, number two, do you uh, know the answer to that? No, I, I, I don't know. I know it was a wrestler by the name of Nelson, that's all. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, number two, uh, what wrestler became a singer and billed himself as uh, a half Nelson Eddy? All right, I'll switch to number three. Mr. Number three, in New York State, wrestling matches are not... Uh, called matches. What are they called? Wrestling exhibitions. Uh, Polly? Uh, Mr. Number Two, what is Gorgeous George's real name? Gorgeous George. N Mrs. Number Two, do you agree? Well, I agree that uh, that's his name that has been changed. It was George Wagner, but Gorgeous George is now his legal name. Who ever heard of a first name called George? <laughs> Gor Gor gorgeous. Um, Number, uh, Mrs. Number Three, uh, what do you feel uh, Gorgeous George's real name was before he changed it? George Wagner. Number one, oh no. I'm sorry, that's it. We have to stop wrestling now without consultation. Let's take a hold on our ballots and cast a vote, if you will, and select number one, couple, couple number two, or couple number three. Okay, ballots all marked? Everybody? Okay, Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number one. I, I may be wrong. I thought that gorgeous, gorgeous, George, George, George's... <laughs> All right, that guy. I thought George his Wagner. real name was George uh, uh, Weber, and number two and number three said Wagner. I, so I could be wrong, but on that I voted for number one. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ralph, isn't it nice to be home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your vote? Uh, number two. Uh, I didn't get much information from any of them, and uh, number two seemed to have the least for some reason or another, so I just went for them. <laughs> Kitty, your selection? I was so undone by my question that I voted for number three not hearing what she said her fam favorite hold was. <laughs> And what about your vote, High? Well, I voted for number two because they struck me as having found the secret of, of, a, of a long marriage, and that is by putting their heads together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we go now, and let's see how you go as well as we discover which one of these couples is the real husband and wife wrestling team. I'm going to ask you all three, all six people, I should say, to come and stand in front of your desks, if you will, please. A little easier that way than asking you to stand up. All right, now, will the real Shirley and Roy McClarity please step forward? Oh! 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 I got it! I got it! <laughs> no mat either. <laughs> There's nothing phony about that one. All right, now, uh, couple number one, you tell us who you really are. My name is Honey Alden. I'm an exotic dancer, and I never saw this gentleman till this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and gentleman number one. My name is Ed Coleman. I work for Shanley Distillers, sell Shanley Reserve, but I also am a scout for the New York football giants. <laughs> and uh, number two. Uh, my name is Vic Obeck. I'm director of athletics for New York University. Today is my 15th wedding anniversary, but this young lady is not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and young lady who is not his wife, who are you and what do you do? My name is Frances Gar, and I'm a professional swimmer and choreographer. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure having you all with us tonight, and I hope your back is all right after that fall. <laughs> that stage looks a little lower in one spot. And all of you on your way out, there will be a carton of Marlboros for each of you. Thank you very much. Happy falls, happy holes, and happy wrestling to all of you. Good night and good luck. Now, we'll get back to our game in just a moment. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Elizabeth... Gray Vining. What is your name, please? My name is Elizabeth Gray Vining. What is your name, please? My name is Elizabeth Gray Vining. Again, an affidavit panel. I, Elizabeth Gray Vining, am the author of 16 books, mostly for children. In 1946, I was chosen by the Japanese imperial household to go to Japan as tutor for the 12-year-old crown prince Akihito. I was asked to teach him English to, to, quote, open windows on a wider world. I stayed in Japan four years teaching not only the crown prince, but three of his sisters, his younger brother, and also his mother, the empress of Japan. I was provided with my own house and servants and was often entertained at the palace by the imperial family. I wrote a book on my experiences, which was on the bestseller list for more than five months. It is called Windows for the Crown Prince, signed Elizabeth Gray Vining. Again, panel, you hear three people all claim to be the same one, all claiming this time to be Elizabeth Gray Vining, tutor to the Crown Prince of Japan. And we'll start with High Gardner. Hi. Uh, number one, is, uh, is sukiyaki a drink, uh, an entree, or the name of a Japanese strip tease dance? It's an entree. Uh, number uh, two, how old is the prince right now? Twenty-five. Uh, and number three, last week the, the uh, royal family, I heard this on radio, submitted uh, poems in a national contest, and the emperor and his wife and the prince, everybody entered it. Do you know what the subject was? Poem? Mm. Are there anything to do with their New Year poems that they have every year? Uh, number Where two? Everyone submit I'm sorry. It was, it was their Japanese New Year ceremony. But what there. was the subject of the poems? Mm, number one? I don't know. Polly? Um, and number two, how do you say good morning in Japanese? Kanunara. I beg your pardon? Kamunara. Kamunara. 
Uh, number three, how do you say good morning? Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, in North Carolina to you. <laughs> number one, you live in Japan four years. Who's Red Button? <laughs> he wasn't in Japan when I was there. What? He wasn't in Japan when I was there. Number two, um, uh, it said in the papers recently that the Crown Prince is marrying a commoner. What is her name? Her name is Michiko Suda. Number three, uh, what is unusual about this marriage? Well, he's marrying a commoner, which is breaking all former traditions. Ralph? Um, number one, um... Uh, who published your book, uh, uh, Windows for the Crown Prince? J.B. Lippincott Company. Number two, same question. J.B. Lippincott. Number three, same question. J.B. Lippincott. Uh, number one, does the emperor speak English? No, he doesn't. Number two, same question. No. Number three? No. Um, <laughs> well, number one, were you the only teacher of the Crown Prince, and I believe you said the three sisters? No, no, there were many teachers, but I was the only American teacher. Kitty? Number one, where did you teach the Crown Prince? I taught him in school, in his class at school, and in his home. His home? Did he live in the palace? No. Where did he live? He had a home of his own. A home of his own? When he was how old? Well, from the time he was three. Oh, my. Poor little mice. <laughs> Oh, number two, um, how did you teach uh, these people? Did you speak Japanese? No, uh, they preferred that I not know Japanese when I went out there. Oh. And I did it with gestures and with words and building slightly on the vocabulary that he always ha had. He number three, how were you chosen? Oh. I haven't time to find out. I'm oh. terribly sorry, <laughs> but it is time to vote, so will you please mark your ballots. And in so doing, select number one, number two... Or number three. All set? No. Molly, you haven't marked yet? No, I really don't know. I'm really caught between the... Who were the last ones? They were one and three. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, I know it's number three, but I voted for number one. Uh, number three said good, uh, Ohio, which I think is correct for good morning. But number one... Uh, she just sort of has a look about her that, that, uh, and number three looks familiar. <laughs> I have a feeling that I've seen her somewhere, and I don't think I would see the Crown Prince with school teachers. So. <laughs> All right, Ralph, please, your vote. <clears throat> number one. Again, I can't give any specific reason. I just have a sense about it. Okay, Kitty? I voted for number one. I got a chance to ask number one more questions, and I never got a chance to finish my question with number three. I'm sorry. <laughs> the time is running a little short. Yes, sir. And I also voted for number one for the same reasons that Polly and everybody else in the panel did. Well, there we have <laughs> no it. No reasons at all. Number one. Right. <laughs> Find out how right or wrong we are in just a moment. Let's discover as we uh, ask the real... Elizabeth Gray Vining, tutor to the Crown Prince of Japan, to please stand up. Uh, you did it. <laughs> well, they were tough to fool that time. Number two, would you tell us who? By the way, before we leave uh, Miss Vining, I would like to say that she's a really very busy woman. Uh, Mrs. Vining has an authoritative biography of the great Quaker leader, Rufus Jones. It was just published this past September, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Much success to you with the book. Uh, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Louisa Farron Wood. I'm nothing but a housewife and gardener from New Canaan, Connecticut, but my husband is an executive with uh, Crusade for Freedom, the fundraising organization of uh, Radio Free Europe. Thank you very much. <laughs> and number three, what about you? My name is Margaret Brainerd, and I'm, I do sales promotion for Perfem, a very highly concentrated perfume stick. Thank you very much. Well, in checking our score, it was unanimous. They did real well, which meant, of course, there were no incorrect votes. But in that case, Marvel presents you with $150 to be divided and a rather partitioned off among you. On your way out, you'll find a carton of Marlboro's for, Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Thank you very much for being with us. Hope you had a good time. We did. Good night and good luck. Just a well, that's all the time we have for tonight, except to tell you with great sorrow and joy, too, that 
Polly is not going to be with us for the next uh, few weeks. She's going to uh, open in a brand new play. She's been rehearsing, a musical play it is. And the name of it is First Impressions. Polly, awful good luck to you, but come back to us soon, will you? Good luck. Thank you. Hurry back, and a lot of success. Now, incidentally, all of you folks who are watching our show who are not citizens, this is a very important month for you, January. It's terribly important that you report your address to the Immigration and Naturalization Service. So those of you who are not citizens, go to any post office or immigration office and fill out an address report card. I guess that's it. Good night, panel. Good, good night, night, Bud. Bud. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth, it's a Mark Gibson Bill Hartman production.